Okay, today we're going to be talking about the Roy Stevens William Costello palming method. And we're not going to do the whole method. In fact, I don't even do it exactly like they do it. I've kind of tweaked it uh, my own way. Uh, this is going to be the harmonic arpeggios where you palm and you start on low C and work your way up. Um, the Roy Stevens William Costello is a method, but it also is an embouchure change, and we're going to be doing nothing about embouchure changes today. So um, if you've um, already downloaded some of their stuff, we're not changing embouchures. We're only using some of their techniques as a way to increase uh, the uh, flexibility in, in your chops and also your range. So um, today is going to be the harmonic arpeggios, and uh, this particular tutorial will be instructing you how to do it. Uh, now, for other instruments, um, I actually have had French horn players successfully do this. Um, although it's a little bit weird, but they have to kind of hold it up with both hands. Um, trombone players so far have been able to do it. Um, and I haven't had yet any um, euphonium players or tuba players. I don't even know if that would be possible. So I think right now for, it's safe to say that um, it, this works for trumpet, trombone, and French horn players, um, the way you're able to do it. So um, the main thing is you got your instrument, whether it be a French horn, trumpet, or trombone, and you're going to try to lay it in your palm and then put the horn up a little bit at an angle like this. So you got the mouthpiece on your chops just the way you normally would. Now notice my hand is kind of like a table or a plate. I'm not gripping anything like this. Your hand is actually stiff. It's like a shelf or a plate and you lay the instrument on top if you can. Now with a French horn you might have to use two hands to do it. Maybe even bone, I'm not sure. But basically, the, the bottom line is you don't want to curl your fingers or do any kind of gripping. So you're only allowing just the natural weight of the horn to be the only pressure that you're going to be able to have when you're playing. So that's number one. Now, I want you to maintain your same armature setting. So I don't want you to um, have your lower jaw move forward. I don't want you to slide your mouthpiece down. I want you to keep the same armature setting that you've been using. And, but we're going to use this particular method as a tool only. So it's great uh, for no pressure. Um, this happens to be one of the ones that I'm actually not the best at. Um, I actually did change my embouchure temporarily to the Stevens and um, followed the whole method and did it. Um, it didn't, wasn't really my cup of tea. I didn't really get the best results out of it. However, I do get pretty decent results out of just um, using this particular method. I mean, this particular technique, rather. So um, let me just quickly explain how we're going to do this. We're going to start on... Um, the lowest harmonic open position note uh, that you can get. So for uh, trumpet players, that'll be low C. Um, in open position, you can't go any lower unless you go into pedal tone range. For a trombone, that would be your first pos slide position note, and that would likely be, without going to your pedal tone range, I'm, I'm guessing that it's going to be that um, second line B flat in the bass clef staff. Because to go below that in first position, I think you have to hit pedal. So we're gonna that would be your note. French horn players, I'm just going to, I know that uh, with the um, acoustics of the French horn might allow you to start a little bit lower. and uh, But on the F side of the horn, let's just do it on the F side of the horn only and have you start on low C. So French horn players, treble clef, start on low C on the F side of the horn so you won't be engaging uh, the trigger. You can't because of the nature of this particular technique. So we go up the first three notes, and then the technique is you always start on the original note and keep the same setting. If you do get up high above the staff and then start, stop, or reset, well, uh, it will enable you to get higher, but now you've just kind of defeated part of the purpose of the technique, which um, is starting at a wide aperture and rolling in. So um, yes, you can, for example, if you got the high C above the staff, and then regrouped and restarted on the high scene, went a little higher, you are going to be able to get higher, but we're not going to do that today. So I typically get up to, um, for on trumpet, I typically get up to E's, sometimes uh, double G's, the way I do it, uh, because I'm not start starting, stopping, and resetting. And you can watch some of the guys who are um, gurus with this particular method, um, and most often, they once they get to high C, you'll see them um, re-attack the high C and then continue higher, what they've just done, of course, is they reset their chops and rolled it in. They created a smaller aperture, and they're not, they're, that allows them to go higher. We're not going to do that. So the first three notes, 
Starting on low C on trumpet, that would be concert B flat. I got it palmed. You notice there's nothing here. Um, it's gripping the horn, it's just a shelf. So we're playing about a medium forte to a forte level, not blasting, just filling up the horn. You notice that the only note that I tongued was the first note, and the other notes were slurred. So that would be your first series. Now you come back and start on the low C again, or the concert B flat, or for trombone, French horn, we've already mentioned what that start note for you would be. It would be um, the B flat for trombone, bass clef, it would be the low C for French horn. And now you keep adding notes, so here we go. I'm adding on another note now. I'll regroup, start again, and add yet another note.